If you want to watch the full episode tomorrow night, we are going to be down at the Zimmerman Center, which is in Long Level, York County, Pennsylvania. If you are in Lancaster, please come across the river for this. It is going to be a great presentation on the full history of Native Americans um, and how they live and lived. Tonight, some of our takeaways with the short episode is that it's never too late to right a wrong. Mm -hmm. And if you're watching, this is just a single story of Native American heritage. There's really a lot more, and that's what tomorrow is night, tomorrow night's presentation is mm -hmm. gonna cover. We're gonna talk about it for an hour, and it, it celebrates a little bit more of their history. Yeah, so we're gonna give you a little deep dive into what the boarding school is like. Yeah. So by 1879, a one-of-a-kind local school opens just northwest of York County in Carlisle. And unlike a well-rounded instruction of tolerance and acceptance, the goal of this school was to educate um, and strip away the Native American lifestyle and make them more like the um, popular culture, like the white man, mm -hmm. basically. So it wasn't like a boarding school or public school would be like today. Yep. So Native Americans were viewed as this problem. There mm -hmm. was this territorial imperialism that was happening in the United States. And so really to kind of wipe out the existence of the Native American tribes, what they mm -hmm. did was they opened up these schools. And the first school was founded by a Civil War veteran, and his name was Lieutenant Colonel Richard Henry Pratt. He led the opening of this first government-operated residential school for Native Americans right here in Carlisle. Not York mm -hmm. County, but I mean close enough that we're considering it local history. Its mission was to assimilate Native Americans into the white culture. And here's a picture of that. All those poor kids. Mm -hmm. Such a shame. Oh. Okay, so Pratt and the school's representatives relocated the children from Olaga Sioux and Bruel Sioux tribes from the Dakota territories, and they forced them to shed their identity as they traversed thousands of miles to reach the East Coast. And this Pennsylvania school represents just one of 375 plus square boarding schools across the nation. The famous Jim Thrope actually attended along with many others. Yeah. Have you been to Jim Thorpe? I haven't, no. I mean, I know a lot about the Carlisle boarding school and I've learned a lot about Jim Thorpe over the years, but I've never actually been there. It's, a, it's actually a really beautiful town. I'm, it is a cool destination. So it started with outward appearance. What they would do is they would take children and they would cut their hair, they would throw out their clothes, and even their shoes were replaced with European garb. And next they would go towards the inner selves and they would make them change their name, replacing them with European names. And also for the children to blend in, they would forfeit their language and their religion. Christianity and English replaced their native tongue and belief systems. And when the students refused or simply made a mistake, their guardians enforced the assimilation through corporal punishment or even solitary confinement. And their culture in its essence is canceled permanently mm. through this. Mm. For almost 40 years, the school was going to civilize close to 10,000 children. And today the idea of replacing someone's identity with this ethnocentric conversion makes us cringe. Like it makes me cringe, the Absolutely. idea of it. <laughs> um, and, and rightfully so. However, Pratt and others, they thought that this was really the only way for Native Americans and whites to coexist. So here's a picture of Pratt. And his model was kill the Indian, save the man. And his goal speaks to the cultural genocide, but not the homicide, uh, even though both were wrong. Right. I mean, a really misguided but well-intentioned thing that they were trying to do, and it's just... You... Yeah, I'd be interested to see their intentions, like ask them. Um, but it, it, And we want to be aware of presentism now. Right. Of course, like current day values is hard to place on the past, but, but this was definitely a dark pot spot in American history, oh, for sure. absolutely. So Deb Holland, a U.S. Interior Secretary under the Biden administration and the first Native American to serve as a cabinet secretary, launched an action plan to address the past wrongs. The Federal Indian Boarding School Initiative are identifying other residential schools like Carlisle in order to locate the cemeteries that are there. She said official recognition like this promises sustained measures to address a wrong executed long ago. If you'd like to read more, this comes from an article that was written for Witnessing New York. You can go check it out and read the full story. Yeah, so we're going to go over our takeaways one more time before we leave. So number one, it's never too late to right a wrong. Number two, this is a single story of Native American history in our area. So please join us tomorrow to learn more about the Native Americans in our area and learn more about local history. The full story. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thanks, guys.